Hello and welcome to the fifth part of the XCAM tutorial video and I think we can start immediately with the next function and first I have to load a project this okay and the function I want to show you now is the replace function and basically there are two different ways to replace objects so and the first way is the possibility to replace a single object and please note that you are not able to replace any already imported object so that's not part of the XCAM you can only replace objects within the current active project and this replace function is very easy to use you see here a wall created with many objects and now I want to replace some single objects and first you need to select the object type for the replacing and you can select this object type from the library from for example and I want to use this object type so and now it's easy simply set the focus to the object you want to replace and then press the key R set the focus to another object press R so that is really simple of course you can switch to another object type So maybe this, no, and this one. So you can see it's very easy. And you know, for this example, it makes sense to have objects all with the same bounding box size and you can of course switch them back so you only need to select the original object type and then and another example And another good example is if you have created a wall with one object type. Now you simply, oh, first I have to search for the right object. Okay, here we go. Now it's simple to replace some single elements of the wall with an other object type so maybe this 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 and this space to delete the temporary object and you know that was really easy to change the whole wall the next function i want to show you is a small highlight maybe a very small highlight but in my opinion it's very very helpful and maybe you know the situation if you have selected any object and you want to change the position a little bit or maybe the orientation the high whatever and then you realize that you have selected the wrong object and then it's uh, it's a little bit tricky to bring the object back to the last position so you know it's annoying but with the XCAM you have always the possibility to set an object back to the last known position and that means if you have selected any object and then maybe you have changed the position, the height, the orientation, whatever and now you want that back this object to this last position then simply press the key E and as you can see the object is 
placed at the last position. So every time you press E, you know, it's easy. And this function works also with temporary objects. So for example, if you create a wall, copy some objects, and then, oops, the current selected object has the wrong position, maybe also the wrong uh, direction, whatever, and you know, you want to bring that object back to the last position where the object was created, so then simply press again the E key, and you know, you can simply go on with the copy action. But that's not all, and as I said, you can set back any object to the last known position, but there is also a function to set any object back to the last saved position. So that's really different. So the last known position means if you have selected any saved object, you can bring that object back by pressing E. But this function is working only as long as you have selected this object. So, if you, for example, select now another object, then for this object a new position was saved. So I can press E again for this object, but if I switch back to this one, press E, nothing happens because this object has now a new last known position. And that's the you know the last safe position now. But if you press now the left shift key, press and hold down the left shift key, and then press E, then the object is set back to the last safe position. And if you not have saved your project at the moment, then the position is used where the object was created. And that is really, really helpful, in my opinion. And this function resets not only the position or direction, whatever, but also the last saved object type. So, for example, if you have replaced them objects. And now you select any of these objects and press and hold down the left shift key and then press E. Then, you know, all the things come back to the last saved state. Okay, the next function I want to show you is a single brush, but in this part of the tutorial only the basics about this brush. And to start this function, the single brush, you have to press B on your keyboard, but remember if you have selected any saved object and you press B, then you know, you switch to the alternate moving mode. And I press E to set the object back, press space to deselect. And now I select any object type here from the library list to create a temporary object. And now I can start the brush by pressing B and what you can see is the object and also the crosshair are now following the mouse pointer. So, and now you simply left click the mouse button to create an object copy. So, and every time I left click, you know, you create a new object copy. And what you can see is each object copy gets a randomized orientation, and that's the default setting, 
because the brush was designed to place objects like trees or stones and so on. So then it's a good idea that every object has a randomized orientation. And if you work with this brush you have always only two options and the first option is to press the spacebar then you see this little dialog and at this point you can delete all objects from the current brush session so of course you can press the cancel button to go on with the brush but if you press OK to confirm then all objects are deleted but only the objects from this brush session and the other option is if you have created some objects with the brush press the return key and then all the objects from the current brush session will be saved into your project so hit return and that's all and as you can see at the end of the project list all the trees are saved and there is a really nice feature if you work with a brush so start the brush by pressing B and then you can every time switch between all the different object types within the current selected object library so simply press the arrow keys up and down and as you can see you switch between different objects and it's cool and of course if the brush is active all the basic functions are available so for example the stepless rotation or rotation stepwise change the height stepless change the height stepwise press the end key to bring the object back to the ground and press page up page down to rotate the object in 45 degree steps and yes that's all the basic stuff around this single brush and there are two more small functions I want to show you in this part of the video tutorial and the first one is if you want to have the maximum overview or maybe you want simply create a screenshot then you can press the key V to hide all user interface elements so that's sometimes really nice and if you press V again then you know all the elements are visible again but note in this mode not all functions are available and the second function is maybe you're a little bit confused at the moment about all these different keyboard shortcuts but there is a hidden list with all available keyboard shortcuts and to show this list simply click this button here on the top of the screen and you can see then this system data dialog and there you can find this little button so hit the button and then you can see all the available keyboard shortcuts but note that not all functions are explained so far you know maybe it, it's a little help for you at this point but some functions are explained later